Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the first $1,000 that a new prepper should spend. The purpose of this isn't necessarily going to be so that you can survive out in the woods like Rambo in some sort of Red Dawn situation. This is going to be more or less most of the stuff that you would need to shelter in place for maybe say around a month or so. You would have most of your food needs taken care of, a lot of your water needs, You'd be able to keep some lights on and you would also be able to cook and do some other stuff and y'all i know that a thousand dollars is a lot of money obviously but people might have tax returns coming up and also it could just be kind of a good educational thing to give you some ideas to work towards and one of the first things that people should do is go out and buy at least a hundred dollars of shelf stable food and the idea here is to get as much food as you can for as little money as possible. You're not really gonna be going out and buying any freeze-dried meals or anything like that because they're around $10 a pop now. Your focus here should be on things like dried beans, dried rice, peas, also maybe some powdered milk, different kinds of vegetable oil, also salt, sugar, things that are gonna have a fairly long shelf life for the most part and they're gonna be easy to store. You might also wanna throw some canned goods in there, especially things that have different kinds of meat in them. If you're storing pasta, maybe get some pasta sauce that already has meat in it. But the bottom line is you just need something that you can eat on because while yes, most human beings, unless they have some sort of health problem, can survive around a month without food, you're gonna start to degrade mentally and physically much, much sooner than that. So I think having food is a very good place to start. The next thing that I recommend new preppers pick up is three aquatainers. These are around $20 each, so if you get three, that's gonna be about $60. The thing that I like about these water containers versus others is that they're very easy to use around the house. They all come with a nice spigot on them that stores inside of it when not in use, and you can use that to dispense water into a cup for drinking, but also you can set it on your counter over the edge of your sink, use it for washing your hands, washing dishes, also doing other things like maybe brushing your teeth. And if you're short on water, of course you wanna be careful with you know the things that you do with that water, but having that spigot makes those tasks a lot easier. And while they aren't necessarily the most durable water containers on the market, as long as you're just using it around the house, you're relatively careful with it, then you're not gonna have any problems. You can also take them camping, just don't drop them off of anything or try to punt them. Each one holds around seven gallons of water, so if you have three of them, that's 21 gallons. And if you follow the one gallon of water per person per day rule, that's enough for one person for around three weeks. Now, if you live in a hotter climate, then of course you're gonna need more. If you supplement that with some bottled water that you rotate through, like what me and my family does, then it wouldn't be too terribly hard to make that last around a month for one person. The next thing that I would recommend new preppers do is build a gravity filter. And to do this, you're gonna need a Sawyer tap water filter, a food grade plastic bucket, and then also a spigot kit. All that's gonna run you probably around $60 or so. If you wanna increase its effectiveness and extend the life of that filter, then you can throw a pillowcase in there also to act as a pre-filter. But that setup will remove things like sediment, microplastics, and also bacteria and protozoa from your water. If you need to remove viruses, then you're either gonna need to use something like bleach or boil the water, and we're gonna cover how to boil water in just a second. But if you live in an urban area or a more rural area where there's a lot of large scale agriculture where there's a lot of pesticides being used, then you're gonna need some type of activated charcoal filter kind of as a second stage to remove those additional contaminants. When it comes to cooking, the first thing that I recommend most people pick up is a butane stove. These are nice because they're pretty inexpensive. You can find them on the low end for around $25. If you wanna spend a little bit more money and get one, that can use both butane and propane. Those cost a little bit more. I think they're around somewhere between $40 and $60. I can't remember exactly how much, 
but regardless of the kind of stove that you get, it's always a good idea to have at least 10 bottles or cans of fuel. When it comes to butane, you can get those cans for around $4 each, just depending on where you're shopping. So that'll be around $40 if you're getting butane. But the good thing about a butane stove specifically is that it's pretty safe to use indoors. Now, of course, you wanna take basic precautions, like crack a window, have a carbon monoxide alarm nearby that's battery powered, but they're safe and also you'll be able to cook anything on them that you would on your normal stovetop. So you'll be able to boil water, you'll be able to heat stuff up, you can even do other things like brown meat or cook pasta. You can do pretty much anything you want to do with them. And then for more long-term grid down situations, I recommend people pick up something like a rocket stove. The one that I have is the EcoZoom Versa. You can pick it up for around $160, although there are some cheaper clones out there that I think are around $130. You can also get the welded metal pipe versions for about half of that. You can get them for around $70 or so. But the thing about a rocket stove is that you can use natural materials. The Versa that I have, it's large enough that you can stick larger pots and skillets on there, so that'll allow you to boil large quantities of water, cook pretty much anything that you would on your stovetop, although you're not going to have as good of a temperature control on it. So if you're trying to do a skillet steak, you might burn it a little bit if you're not careful. But what I like about commercially manufactured rocket stoves versus things like, you know, the cinder block or brick stove is that they will last for quite a while. The one that I have, the Versa, it can last up to five years if you use daily, longer than that if you use it sporadically. But some materials, like certain cinder blocks and certain bricks, they might not be designed to withstand high temperatures on an ongoing basis. So you might start to have some structural integrity issues with those. And the last thing that you want is to be boiling a large pot of water and then your stove fall apart and send that water flying everywhere. The next thing that I recommend people pick up is a way to generate power. And solar is a good option for this. You can pick up a small power station and a set of panels for around $450 if you get them on sale. And a solar generator of that size, it's not going to be able to keep large things like refrigerators or box freezers running. It's just not designed for that. But you can use them for things like keeping at least some lights on, recharging different kinds of batteries, like your cell phone. Even though you might not be making calls in certain situations, it might be nice to have like certain references on there or be able to have access to your pictures. Also, you'll be able to charge up flashlights. If you have cordless power tools, you'll be able to charge those batteries to make repairs or to build fortifications because it's going to be a lot quicker than using egg beater drills and hand saws. And you can also use them to recharge other batteries like double A's, triple A's, and D cells. Like I use those in my motion sensors that I have near my house. And solar is a very good option if you're concerned about longer term situations because you're not gonna have to store fuel for them. Now, if you want a gas powered option, there are things available for around the $450 mark. But the thing with that is you got to consider how much fuel are you going to be able to store because gas cans themselves aren't cheap. And if you get a gas only generator, which is what most of the more inexpensive ones tend to be, then you're going to have to either get fuel stabilizer or rotate that gas fairly regularly. And even if you do use fuel stabilizer, you're still going to need to keep track of how old that gas is. And then after you have a way to generate or collect power, I recommend that people pick up some rechargeable batteries for whatever devices you have. I have stuff that uses double A's and triple A's, and you can find a nice little kit that has those and a charger for around 40 bucks or so, give or take. And if you have things like this lantern that uses D cells, then you want to pick up some of those. And some of y'all are probably at least a little bit irritated that I haven't mentioned defense yet. And the big reason for that is that by the time that you spend the money on something decent like a G19 or an M&P Shield, or on the other side of things like a M&P Sport, by the time that you pay for that, plus the ammo that you would need to train on it, get familiar with it, and then also set aside for a rainy day training that you would need to pay for if you've never used anything like that before, and also range fees, cleaning supplies, this, that, and the other, that alone 
could cost a thousand dollars. If you're in a situation where you don't have any of that yet, then yeah, it might be worth foregoing something like the solar generator to pick up something so you can at least defend yourself. Videos like this, they're only meant to be a guide. Always do what's best for you in your particular situation. Use your best judgment. Now, if you have followed everything to a T so far, you probably have some money left over. Like, I think it was around 70 bucks or so. With that, you can do things like maybe pick up some items for your EDC. Maybe if you don't have like a folding knife or multi-tool yet, go and pick up a reasonably priced option. Also, if you don't have an EDC flashlight, go ahead and get you something small and decent, something like a Coast flashlight. You could also go ahead and pick up some basic tools if you don't have them. Things like hammers, screwdrivers, hand saws. Also, something like an old manual powered egg beater style drill might not be a bad idea. That way you can make the repairs that you need to do, build fortifications, whatever the case may be. You can also pick up things like buckets, totes, and tarps, which have a ton of different uses. Buckets and totes can be used to store survival gear. And I mention this a lot, but if you don't have a rainwater catchment system, you can use tarps and totes to collect rainwater. Another good option might be an emergency radio that has a rechargeable battery that you can power either from some sort of USB connection, hand crank, or solar. Then also maybe a nice LED lantern like this one. And some of y'all are probably concerned about outdoor survival and bushcraft skills. And in that case, you can pick up something like a Mora, a Fiskars hatchet, and then a decent folding saw. And that's going to give you a very good kind of just basic outdoor survival toolkit. And it might also be a good idea to spend some of that money on some more mundane items like toilet paper and other cleaning supplies. In the case of sanitizing wipes, you can use those to clean surfaces so that you don't have to dip into your water storage for cleaning tasks. Other ways to save water is to just use things like paper plates, paper bowls, plasticware instead of something that you're going to have to clean every time that you use it. Cleaning really does use a whole lot of water. Then of course other things like trash bags, you don't want to run out of those right when something goes down and pesticides to keep bugs out of your house and also off of you. You probably also want to have some medication set aside. Like I've done videos on different kinds of over-the-counter medications you should be storing, but basically it just comes down to over-the-counter pain relievers, fever reducers, also things to deal with different kinds of stomach illnesses, along with things like Pedialyte to replenish any fluids that you lose while you're sick. And having medications on hand is especially important if you have small children because they can't use all the kinds of medications that we do. They require specific types and specific dosages. And if something goes down, there's a very good chance that those specific medications are gonna be bought up very quickly. And like I said, y'all, I know that $1,000 is a lot of money to spend on preps. So if you wanna see the first $100 that a new prepper should spend, check out this video. And if you wanna see about how much food that you can get for around $100, check this out. I did the video a couple months ago, so prices might have gone up on some things. But thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.